The flow rate, or the volume of fluid moving through a pipe each second, depends on both the cross-sectional area of the pipe as well as the velocity of the fluid. Symbolically, we write this as the flow rate is equal to area times velocity. This means that the velocity of fluid moving through a pipe is inversely proportional to the area of the pipe. If we wish to compare two pipes of different sizes, we can rewrite the continuity equation to state that the area of pipe 1 times the velocity of the fluid moving through pipe 1 is equal to the area of pipe 2 times the velocity of the fluid moving through pipe 2. This equation lets us calculate the relationship that for a given flow rate, a fluid will flow faster through a thinner pipe. To illustrate this idea, we're going to construct an apparatus out of clear PVC pipe. We'll use a submersible pump to move water through pipes of two different sizes. In order to see how fast the water is moving through each of the differently sized pipes, we'll add red wooden balls so you can watch the velocity of the balls change as it moves from one pipe size to the other. This is what we'll expect to see. In the larger pipe, where the velocity of the water is lower, we'll expect to see the red marker ball move more slowly. In the small pipe, where the velocity is higher, the red marker ball should move more quickly. And here is the actual apparatus. We're pumping water through the one and a half inch pipe, which is then connected to a three quarter inch pipe. Notice that the balls in the larger pipe are moving noticeably slower than the balls are moving when they go through the smaller pipe. Now let's look at some numerical data we collected using this apparatus. The one and a half inch pipe has a diameter of four centimeters. This means the cross-sectional area is 12.8 square centimeters. When we measure the amount of time that it took for the red marker ball to move 100 centimeters through this pipe, it required 6.8 seconds on average, or it was moving at 15 centimeters per second. The smaller pipe had a diameter of 2 centimeters and a cross-sectional area of 3.27 square centimeters. The marker ball required only 1.4 seconds to move the same distance through the smaller pipe and was therefore traveling at 71 centimeters per second. In order to compare the two velocities, let's begin with the form of the continuity equation that states the velocity in the large pipe times the cross-sectional area of the large pipe should be equal to the velocity in the small pipe times a cross-sectional area in the small pipe. When we solve this equation for the velocity in the large pipe, we have the velocity in the large pipe is equal to the velocity in the small pipe times the ratio of the area in the small pipe divided by the area in the large pipe. When we put numbers into this equation, we have the velocity in the large pipe should be equal to 71 centimeters per second times the ratio of 3.27 square centimeters divided by 12.8 square centimeters, or we'd predict that the velocity in the large pipe should be 18 centimeters per second. When we compare the observed velocity of 15 centimeters per second to the calculated velocity of 18 centimeters per second, we see that our observed value is 17% too small. While this is a reasonably good result given the crudeness of this experiment, the low value is understandable because upon careful observation of the ball moving through the large pipe, you'll notice that it's bobbing and weaving a lot and therefore has lost some of its linear velocity. In summary, the continuity equation states that the area of a pipe is inversely proportional to the velocity of a fluid moving through that pipe. The product of the area of a pipe times the velocity of the fluid 
gives the flow rate, or the volume of fluid moving per unit time. If the flow rate is constant, fluids flow through a thinner pipe at a greater velocity.